This is the Financially Simple Podcast, a show dedicated to destroying the complexities of money for today's small business owner. And now, here's your host, pizza-loving, certified financial planner, Justin Goodbread. Welcome to Financially Simple. This is a finance show for small business owners about money, how it works in our business and personal lives, and how we can build wealth to be financially independent. I'm your host, Justin Goodbrand. Today, we continue with our series on growing the value of your business. And today, we're continuing in our micro-series, a series within a series, if you believe it, on strategic planning. So we're in the area of planning in our businesses, and we're talking specifically about strategic planning. And the fourth element of strategic planning deals with the SWOT, S-W-O-T, analysis. So if you remember back thus far, we've talked about our vision and our mission. And last episode, we talked about values. Today, I want to deal with the SWOT analysis. So the SWOT analysis, S-W-O-T, some people call it the SWOT matrix, is part of the strategic planning technique. And it's used to help organizations identify their strengths. There's the S. Their weaknesses, there's the W, their opportunities, there's the O, and the threats they may face. That's the T. So SWAT, strength, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. And you deal with this in relation to the business's competition or perhaps sometimes project planning. Now, I have gone through many, many, many SWAT analysis in my career. In fact, just three weeks ago as part of our Heritage Investors strategic planning meeting, we dealt with an internal SWOT analysis. And the coolest and the best way I've found to develop a SWOT analysis is to create a work in process to get your entire team involved, allow the team to ask challenging questions back and forth. Don't take the first answer. Look through it and make sure that the question is really being answered properly. So that's the way I found out. You may say, Justin, I don't have a team. I'm by myself. You know, I'm also a member of many groups of other business owners, and I've conducted these meetings with other business owners, and business owners have actually asked me as well about the SWOT analysis for my business. So you don't have to have employees to run a SWOT analysis is what I'm getting at. You can work with friends. You can work with family, and you can have someone just challenge your thinking. That's the best way. Now, I was trying to figure out where did the SWOT analysis come from, and Albert Humphrey is who many people credit the SWOT analysis, and basically he led a convention at the Stanford Research Institute back in the 1960s and the 1970s using data from Fortune 500 companies, and that is where the SWOT analysis is think to have generated. So, I mean, you're talking a process that's been around for 30 plus years. So this is nothing new. If you've never heard of the SWOT analysis, after today, you're going to hear it many times in the business world. If you have dealt with a SWOT analysis before, then perhaps maybe you can pick a couple of pointers up the next time you walk through the strategic planning meeting with your team or with your business, you can use some extra points here in the SWOT analysis. So let's deal with the SWOT analysis in detail. So the S deals with the strengths, and you're going to consider your strengths. And the way I look at it is my business strengths. You know, we all know our strengths, weaknesses of our individuals, of ourselves. But the way I look at it is what's the strength of my business from an internal perspective? What do I see as the strength of my business? And what do I see as the strength from the point of the customer? Or what's the strength from the people in the market? So when I'm looking at strengths, you want to think about your strength in relation to your competitors. You don't want to think about them in a vacuum. For example, if all your competitors provide a high quality of service or a high quality of product, then a high quality service or high quality product is not your strength. That's just the demand of the market. So you got to look at it in comparison with your competition. So for example, what advantage does your company or does your organization have over your immediate competition? It may be size. It may be volume. It may be your employees. It may be the size of your sales. It may be the quality of a product. It may be patents. It could be a number of things. That could be a strength. Another question you can ask is what competitive advantage does your company have over the others? And that could be, you know, some of those things I just mentioned. But you're trying to ascertain these answers to these questions in relation to your competition. You may ask the question to figure out a strength. What is it that you and your company does better than anyone else? Is it service? Maybe you have an excellent service division. Maybe it's research and development. Maybe it's a quality control issue. 
what is it that you're doing better than anybody else in the marketplace? What's unique or what's your lowest cost resource that you can draw upon that others can't? Maybe you have 20 something years of business. Maybe it's the fact that I help hundreds of business owners reach their personal and financial goals. I've watched people walk through growing the value of their business. I know it works. I know it doesn't. I live this. I breathe this 24, uh, sometimes it feels like 48 hours a day, but I live and breathe this. That's a low cost resource because it's my life that many others in the financial world don't know. I was having breakfast with another financial person just this week, and the other financial person said, Justin, I don't know anything about business. I know stocks. I don't even know this very well. We'll see what he said. I'm like, ah, come on. You know more than that. But maybe you have some low cost advantage. Maybe it's your personality, your talent. Maybe you have stronger financial reserves than your competition. That could be a strength. What do people see in your market? What do people in your market see as your strength? Maybe it's location. I know one particular dentist, he had an unbelievable location. Just as soon as he came off the interstate, you looked dead into his particular office. You saw his name right in front of you when he came off the interstate. That was an unbelievable competitive advantage. That was a strength that this particular company have. Maybe you have different accreditations or certifications that the competition doesn't have. Maybe you won national awards. In our local market, I am one of the top 100 financial advisors in the United States, uh, according to Investopedia. One of the top 100. I love that. That's a differentiation that other financial people don't have in my marketplace. I love that. What are the processes and systems that your company has? Just systems or processes that your company has that potentially your competition doesn't. So those are the areas of strength. Maybe you deal with what's popularly said as the USP, the unique selling position. I love that phrase. It's a very popular phrase. In fact, if you just Google USP, you'll find just tons of pages on this Unique selling position. And so it's competitive advantage is the way I say it. By the way, these are all hard to find because once you get a competitive advantage, if your competition finds out about it, typically they're going to try to start taking away some of your competitive advantage and then you got to go find another one. If you're having a problem identifying your strengths, write down a list of your organization's characteristics. Write down a list of your values and that'll help you identify the strengths of your organization. So that's the S. Now let's deal with the W, and this is the weaknesses. And you ever the individuals that they're like Eeyore? I was talking about this the other day to somebody. You know, I was watching with my kids Winnie the Pooh. I think it was Christopher Robin, and one of them found Eeyore's tail, and they tried to pin it on him. He said, "Oh, Eeyore, you lost your tail." And he goes, "I probably didn't need it anyways." If you're like an Eeyore, then you're able to see the weaknesses in everybody. However, if you're an internal optimist, many times you don't count weaknesses as the way we should. So the best is to be realistic now. You want to face the unpleasant truths now because your competition and your potential customers can see this. So here's some questions that you may ask when you're trying to identify your weaknesses. You may ask, what disadvantages do you have in comparison to your competition? What are the disadvantages? Maybe it's your dentist and you're not right off the exit. So you're having to market more in order to draw customers to your particular place of business. Maybe that's the disadvantage. Maybe you don't have that prominent location. Maybe you ask the question, what can we improve on today? And that'll help you identify some weaknesses in your organization. You may say, what are some gaps in our capabilities? We just recently hired a new employee to the team at Heritage Investors, and we had a major gap in a service capability. And if we didn't deal with this, we were going to potentially have problems with servicing our clients. And I didn't want that to happen. That was a weakness we had. Maybe you just gone through a strategic initiative and your financials are weak right now. I was dealing with a client and they just purchased a ton of equipment. I told them how to pay cash for it. We went back and forth, ended up paying cash for it, and they pulled their cash reserves way down. Well, at the same time, just coincidentally, a customer delayed payment. You know, not uncommon, but it was a couple hundred thousand dollars. And so now the business owner is having to use a line of credit. And it's expected everything will be okay in the next 30 days. But financially, right now they're weak, and they can't do some things they need to do. Maybe maybe finances are a weakness for you. Maybe ask the question, what are people in our market likely to see as a weakness? Maybe it is that location. Maybe it is that your team is too robust. In the financial world, I had a very, very prominent individual yesterday contact me, and they said, Justin, I'm tired of being talked down to. I've listened to you on the podcast. I've read some of your things, and it seems like you're simple. And they said, I hate being talked down to. I go talk to these financial people, and and this cat, I'll tell you, 
very, very astute individual. And they're like, man, I hate that about financial people. They talk down to me. Well, that could be a weakness. That's what the market's seeing in some of these financial folks out there. To me, that's the strength. That's just who I am. I just, I'm the same way seven days a week, just about. Except when I'm sleeping, then my wife says I'm a bear. <laughs> Are there any time pressures in your business? Maybe you're under constraint to get a particular project in order. That could be a weakness. One of us dealt with here not too long ago is team morale. I was with one of our clients, a very successful business owner, and breaking all-time records, but the team is being stressed. And that's what happens when you push a company outside the margin. So we need to hire somebody, and the team morale is low right now. It's a weakness, and we can end up having turnover. So you want to consider weaknesses from an internal and an external perspective. You want to look at it as if you are looking through the eyes of your team or your customers, and you want to look at the weaknesses of your company as if your competitors are doing better than you. You want to look at it from the outside, from the competition or from your locale around you. You are listening to Financially Simple, destroying the complexities of money for today's small business owner. Now, After we deal with strengths and weaknesses, then we jump into opportunities. And opportunities are vital to the growth of a business. And a useful approach you can do when you're looking at opportunities is to look at your strengths and ask yourself whether any of those strengths provide opportunity for you to grow or opportunity for you to become stronger. You can also look at your weaknesses and ask yourself, do the weaknesses open up opportunity for eliminating the weakness? So you may go through a series of questions like this. You may say, what good opportunities can I spot? Maybe it's a growth initiative. Maybe it is a debt reduction initiative. Maybe it is a team building initiative. Any of those can be opportunities. You may look at it and say, hey, does any of my competitors have vulnerabilities right now? Or is anybody going through weakness? Are they having troubles that I can capitalize on? It sounds bad, but that's the way business works. It's a cutthroat environment many times. So you want to keep an eye on the pulse around you and see... Are there any ways that you can market to your competition? There's a financial firm in town where I live in East Tennessee, and they're a good firm. I know several of the principals. In fact, I was having coffee with one of them not too long ago. And I said, man, I've talked to a couple of your customers. They're coming to work with us. He goes, I know you, dog. And we were laughing. But these are business owners, and that's not their niche. They don't work with a lot of business owners. And I said, I'm going to start marketing to your customers. And we were just jabbing back and forth. And he got serious. He goes, you wouldn't dare, would you? I said, no, man, I wouldn't. You don't want to make your competition mad. Yeah, I am. And we were laughing. He's like, Justin, I'm going to choke you. No, I would never do that. Maybe. (laughs) But you may look at your competition's vulnerabilities and see if there's a way that you can capitalize on it. Maybe you look and you say, are there specific pain points in your market, the niche market you're trying to reach, that through experience you can resolve? Is that an opportunity for you? You may look at interesting trends. Are there interesting trends that are happening right now? You can come up and say, are there changes in technologies? Oh, my goodness, the financial world, wow, we're going through so much change in technologies right now. It's crazy. We have technologies today that in three seconds can do what I used to take me a week to do. It's unbelievable now. So I understand the programming behind it, but it's like, man, I wish I had this 15 years ago. You may look at changes in government policy. Not too long ago, I remember when the, I think it was a tanning bed tax, like you get into a tanning bed and you get tanned. I remember some companies selling out their companies because of the tanning bed tax. I thought that was interesting. Maybe there's social patterns or population changes that are happening. Recently, I was noticing an exodus out of some of the high tax regions of the United States. So you have places like New York and California where the taxes are just crazy high and people are relocating to lower tax locations. Now, not too many folks are moving to East Tennessee, which I am grateful, folks. I mean, I love you guys out in California. I like you guys in New York. I don't know about love. You guys are a little kind of strange. You don't like sweet tea up there, and that just is wrong. And you don't eat grits, and you don't call them pecans. You call them pecans. I don't know. <laughs> not too many folks move to East Tennessee. I kind of like that. I like being here in East Tennessee. The cost of living is low. Well, if I see that particular population pattern moving on, and I want to market to individuals, individuals, that gives me an opportunity. So that's the way you think about the opportunity things. Now, threats are probably the hardest. Threats are external factors that are coming in to change or to disrupt our business. The way I think of threats is to think pest, like a mosquito just land on you, say, you know, pest, P-E-S-T. 
And that PESD stands for political, economic, social, or technological. So you may look and say, what political obstacles do I face? Or what economic obstacles do I face? Or what social obstacles or technological obstacles do I face? What are my competitors doing as it relates to the economic obstacles? Are there social quality standards or technological specifications for your job or your products that are changing? Is the economy coming in to harass you in your particular business? One of the issues that I have to be constantly aware of in the financial world is that at any moment, the markets could take a 20, 30, 40% dive. And that could potentially cause revenue to drop significantly for the financial planning practice. I have to be aware of that threat nonstop. I have to be aware that in the event of the market downturn, many business owners cut back on initiatives like marketing, which I have to be aware of how to consult them. How to say, hey, no, whenever the market turns down, spend more on marketing. That's an opportunity, not a threat. So I have to be aware of the threats that people perceive and how to help them position through that time period. You may look and you may say, you know, like I was saying earlier, technology is changing at a rapid pace, but technological changes can be a big threat. Do you have the manpower to learn it? My mother-in-law, for example, my wife Emily's mother, she retired because of technology. She did not want to learn the technology. And she point blank said, I'm not going to learn these computer things. I've been a nurse for X number of years, like 40 years she was a nurse. And the technology is helping the hospital environment. She's like, I'm not going to learn to use a computer. And so she retired. That was a threat to her and potentially her generation. So you want to be aware of these threats. And the way I look at it is I look through the four boxes, the strengths, the weaknesses, the opportunities, and the threats. And I typically draw four boxes, almost like you would take a big box and put a crosshair through it. I typically put the strengths in the top left-hand side, the weaknesses in the top right-hand side, the opportunities in the bottom left-hand side, and the threats in the bottom right-hand side. And by going through this exercise and identifying the strengths that we have, we can build those. By identifying the weaknesses that we have, we can strengthen those. By seeing the opportunities, we can rank the opportunities that we see. And we're going to talk about that next. We're going to talk about the opportunities that we have. But we can rank these opportunities and we can develop a plan while we're strengthening our weaknesses and while we're building on the strengths we have. Then when we see our threats, we can be ever vigilant to guard against these threats. So that is the basics of a SWOT analysis. Like I said, these are not hard to do. They could take just a few minutes to accomplish a SWOT analysis. We did this in our office, and it took us with our team. We had nine people in the office at one time. It took us about an hour to walk through these various threats for input from everybody where we finally agreed on, here's the top three strengths, here's our top three weaknesses, here's our top three opportunities, here's our top three threats. I like the power of threes. I like to keep it simple for my brain. If you walk through the SWOT analysis, then it'll help you identify the, each of these things. Now, my challenge to you is this. If you haven't conducted a SWOT analysis for your particular business in the last 12 months, just go ahead and stop now and do a SWOT analysis. Spend some time with your team members. Spend some time with the organization and focus on identifying those three strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats, three for each category. And we'll learn in those next coming episodes how then to take what we're identifying and how to grow the value of your company. That's what we're after. So we're in the strategic planning mode right now of the planning module. So pull back a little bit. Remember, there's eight key areas. We have planning, and that's the very first one. We're just dealing with the strategic planning process of planning. We're going to deal into leadership for too long, okay? But right now we're in planning, and this is strategic planning dealing with the SWOT analysis. So with that, hey, thanks for joining me on this Financially Simple podcast. Check out the blog, financiallysimple.com, to see the show notes, to see pictures, things of that nature. And while you're there, sign up for our newsletter. We had like 500 people sign up in the last month and a half, I think it was, I was told, for the newsletter. That's amazing to me. Folks, the newsletter is pretty awesome. It's short, sweet, to the point. It doesn't take you more than about three minutes to read. But every week we share a video, we share a podcast episode, we share a writing that we're getting a lot of questions on. Hey, look, if you like the podcast, share it with a friend. If you know another business owner that can benefit from some of this content, just share it out. Hey, if you don't like the show, hey, share it anyways. As I say every week, life is hard. It is. Life is good and life can be frustrating. Money does not have to be. Let's continue to make our lives at least financially simple. Y'all go out and make it a great day. 
You have been listening to the Financially Simple Podcast. The information in this show is for informational purposes only. This show is not investment advice. Instead, seek help from a competent financial advisor. Justin Goodbread, CFP, is an investment advisor representative of Heritage Investors, a registered investment advisor.